Well, good evening. So I've uh, done this experiment a number of times now, tweaking it just a little bit each time to see if I can get better results. And what I mean by better results, better recorded results. Apparently we're being serenaded tonight by my daughter playing the flute and extraneous water noises. So here's uh, the setup again. Let me show you the little tweaks that I've done, and hopefully it will aid in finding out what's going on here. So this is, of course, the baking soda and tuning fork experiment where we show what an electric field looks like. Of course, there's the tuning fork just connected with an alligator clip down to the post, which is, of course, connected underneath the table to the transformer, which is right there. 9,000 volts AC. The other side of it is connected via the red one to the other bolt, which is also connected to the other side of the transformer. This, of course, is a popcorn tin. And the tweak I made on it this time is I've painted the top black, and the dish that the baking soda is sitting on is also painted black. And, of course, we've got a little cardboard background so this, hopefully, will make that baking soda be very, very visible. I am just attaching the camera into its cradle. And we're going to do a zoom in. Get the light positioned on. Oh, come on. Stay. All right, do I feel good with that? I think I do. So again, pay attention to the very top of the baking soda mound. I've flattened it out with a spoon, as much as you can flatten anything out with a spoon. Okay, couple ridges, one, two, three, four, five major ridges, couple secondary ridges. And I've got a second camera on this whole thing, too. I'm just going to step over here and turn it back on. Fortunately, it's already focused in and everything. And that is now recording. And here we go. All right, three, two, one. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes. That is beautiful. Get a secondary light on it. Nice. See if I can get close to it without shocking the crap out of myself. I don't know if the camera's picking up, but there is a lot of movement around the periphery. Which we've seen every time anyway. As you can see, we're getting some erosion patterns on the insides. Looks like one crater with a, mazed, with a raised mound. Hey, imagine that, electricity creating a crater with a raised mound. Wow, I've never heard of that before. Uh, two craters here in front, close by, have just joined, and there's even a fourth one in the back. And we are fading fast with the effect. Okay. So now, take the camera out of the cradle. Move that. Do a little zoom in. Oh, come on, flashlight. Hey, nope. There we go. Okay, these two craters at the bottom of the screen are the one that joined together. That one over there in the back is the one that had the mound in it. The mound has since been worn away. And right here is what I'm calling the fourth one. Not real distinct. 
However, for those who were following or were following our Electric Universe Geology page on Facebook when it was still up, you should recognize some of these formations. You'll see them on different planets, including our own. Does electricity form our geologic features? You better believe it does. Absolutely. Is it AC voltage at 9,000 volts? Nope. No, it's not. However, the electricity does create the same effects. Hello. And here we go again. Now that's kind of cool that? how he's, I know, how it looks, you almost get it, what looks like a magnetic effect, and that will, as it deteriorates, that will go down. Hi, what are you doing? Just saying good night. Oh, it's pretty it's cool, isn't weird. it? Isn't it? And that's just baking powder? That's just baking, that's baking soda. Oh. What's funny is baking powder has baking soda in it. Wow, how long are those little pillars going to stay? Good night, son. So there was... There was a... Uh, <laughs> let me say it this way. Devil's Tower is columic basalt. And I've been involved in a little discussion of people saying, oh, it's volcanic or, oh, it's a giant tree. Well, it's not a giant tree, <laughs> and I, it's not volcanic either. It is an electrical eruption, and or, well, let me say it this way. I believe it's an electrical eruption, where we had a very large discharge in the area that literally pulled up that basaltic rock and or formed it at the same time and pulled it up. And I made the comment that that can be replicated in the lab. Now, while this is neither basalt nor pulled up, you can see that there are still very clear spires that are very, very reminiscent of Devil's Tower. And it's simply electricity. Simply that. If you want to argue that basalt won't do this, well, go get some basalt and <laughs> pulverize it and add electricity to it, see what happens. And I'll tell you one thing, from all the experiments that I've done here in the lab, I'm telling you, you're going to see that same shape, those same geometries appear, which is amazing. And what's cool is this is just such basic application of electricity, and yet we get such amazing, amazing formations who knows what could happen with even larger voltages and different uh, types of electricity, both AC and DC. I mean, C.J. Ransom has shown, well, it's not just C.J. Ransom, a bunch of different people have shown experiments over the time. C.J. Ransom was just the first one that I came across who did, la who did experiments in his lab like this to create craters, specifically, in different soils showing that they are clearly circular and not made by impact. And a bunch of other people have done these type of experiments as well, showing the same thing. But as we, as the more I do this, the more I realize that electricity creates so many formations. And then, of course, if you take the work of Andy Hall and his, his uh, discoveries that electric discharges create supersonic winds and the shape of those supersonic winds is the shape of nearby mountains. I mean, it's just clear as anything can be, as clear as the sun is in the sky. And what's interesting is even with this experiment, if you look very carefully, if the light will allow it and if the camera will pick it up, you'll see there is clearly wind going on here. And yes, it's ionic wind wind that's not created by rising convection currents or the clashing of cold and heat 
air masses. It is ionic wind. Is it a real thing? Does it cause movement of soils? You're dang right it does. Wow. I'm a little taken aback because I've never seen these columns remain that long in here before, which is really cool. There is so much peripheral motion here. It's actually going up out of the of the craters and then redepositing back down around. I don't know if the camera's at the right angle to see this. Let's see if I can do this without shocking myself again. This and this right here. Does the camera pick that up? I think the camera's sitting just off to the side of it. You see how that looks like a broken arch? Is arches a part of this electrical geological formation process? You're dang right it is. Absolutely. Now, while that was never, well, I don't want to say that was never an arch because it was hollowed out from underneath and around, and that's the remnants of it. Do we see remnants like that in terrestrial neighborhoods? Yeah, you better believe we do. That is just really cool. It's funny, I've got so many lights on this thing, but the one that illuminates it the best is my little handheld flashlight. <laughs> and there goes the power. Okay, it looks like this live is done because my battery is just about dead. Unless I can plug it in real quick. Come here. Yay, I got it back. Here we go. Now, let me do one more thing. I painted this whole thing black so we could see the spread of the baking soda. Let me zoom back out. Okay. That whole top of the plate is covered black, and you can see now that it, you can just barely, barely see it. Of course, the the glass plate that it was on was also painted black and you can almost see none of that. So the spread of that is also not symmetrical, which is not really surprising because the tines themselves are not symmetrical. If there were four, you know, two, then it would have more of a symmetry. Not terribly symmetrical, so not really surprising that the dispersion pattern isn't symmetrical. But again, if you remember, rewind the video and go look at the at what the surface was of that plate and you'll remember how flat it was and how absolutely not flat it is now. Delta electricity help form ge <laughs> geology. Say it with me now. Oh yeah. Yeah it does. Thanks for watching. Science!